If you're looking to enhance your audio in your videos, there is no reason you should not be using this new tool by Adobe. You can go from having audio like this to audio like this. And it literally only takes seconds to use. Literally only seconds. All you have to do is upload your audio to podcast.adobe.com slash enhance, wait for it to analyze your clip, and then it spits out a brand new enhanced audio clip. No more fumbling around with random audio effects in your editing program. No more crazy echoes or loud air conditioning machines. Just perfect, clean audio. It's just so great. Maybe a little too great. So the reality is Adobe's new AI tool is a pretty good tool to use, but not as your only tool in your editing arsenal. It's really not something you should 100% rely on. The tool generally does a good job at cleaning up audio, but at this time it lacks any type of individual setting that help you get a specific desired output. You're really putting your faith in the machine's hands to do it for you. And sometimes the audio might not sound the way you want it. In most of these situations, the audio comes out too clean, too processed. So for example, when I ran this video's audio through the AI tool, it added a pretty strong de -er to it. You probably noticed that it was cutting off some of my words. And unfortunately, there's no real way to prevent that at this point. It may not sound natural for the environment that you're in. It usually works pretty well for at-home setups or studio setups where you have more of a controlled audio environment. Let's say you're outside or out in the field or somewhere with a lot of ambient noise and not a studio setup. Audio in these situations don't naturally sound that way. So my biggest suggestion with this tool is to just try it out when applicable. I mean, it's free, so there's no reason not to. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, no big deal. Just don't rely on it 100% to fix your video. That's your job, not its job. Learn the tools in your editing program to at least a degree where you can handle cleaning up your audio on your own. Just having that ability will help you in many, many situations and give you more confidence when AI tools don't work the way they're expected to work. This also doesn't mean you can skimp on the way that you record audio. You should still be setting things up in the best possible way in order to capture the best sound you can. Because the cleaner your audio is to start with, the better output you're going to have when you run it through this tool. Anything that you record that has a very unique noise that stands out that's different than the typical ambience that you have in the environment that you're shooting, that might skew the results if you upload the entire audio file by itself. So sections like that, when you do have some sort of an audio anomaly, you're going to want to upload those separately. Now, what this tool is super great for is audio that you don't have control over. If you're working with Zoom footage or user-generated content from an iPhone, those usually have pretty poor audio quality. But luckily, with this tool, you can get a generally acceptable output with really not having to do a whole lot of work, which is honestly a game changer in today's media world. I worked on tons of Zoom video content during the pandemic and could not stand the audio quality. Bad audio can ruin a video, even if the visuals are great. Nobody wants to hear bad audio. With this tool, you really don't have an excuse anymore. Is it perfect? No but you're going to find it useful in a lot of situations. Have you used it before? How has it worked for you? Either way, it's a good start, and it's going to be interesting to see what Adobe does with this in the future.